Welcome to Bunnyfish Crafts. I'm your host, Heather, known as Bunnyfish on Ravelry, Instagram, and YouTube. Today is the 24th of July, 2018. This is episode 17. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. So we have changed locations again. Now we are sitting on my bed, um, which is not the best light, but there are children in my living room watching um, TV, so I can't sit in my preferred recording space, and my um, my room where I recorded last time in front of that wall of yarn is a little, it's a little rearranged because they, the people who are working on my bathroom back here, I talked about that many podcasts ago, um, what's going on there? I don't know, just a weird hair thing going on, uh, sorry, um, the... There's a bathroom. There was a door into this bedroom, but I didn't like it because it made one wall basically unusable. So let me just talk about my house for a moment. In this room that I'm in, two of the walls have windows, which is lovely, but that makes it so that there's not usable space, not as much usable space on those two walls. As you can see, this is a giant picture window back here behind my bed. My bed covers uh, a third of it. Um, that wall has two windows on it, and then this wall has a closet door and another closet door, which leads out to the garage. And then that wall had a door into the hallway and a door into the bathroom. So that's no wall space for furniture, for hanging things up. So we closed off that door because I didn't need the door. I can walk into the hallway and then walk into the bathroom. It's fine. Um, anyway, so that where I was recording last time is all in disarray while they get that figured out. He was supposed to come. He was here on Saturday and did some things, and then he was supposed to drywall and mud on Sunday, but then his truck had to be towed to the shop, so, oh, speaking of, my vehicle is, has been out of service, basically, since last week, before I recorded the podcast, um, because I have a rotten transmission pan. Who knew that was a thing? I'm taking it in tomorrow morning to get that replaced, but, that's super inconvenient to not have a vehicle. Not that I need a vehicle during the summer. It's not like kids need to get to school or anything, but it makes grocery shopping a little more interesting. Luckily, I have my sister for that. So let's get on to the show. Um, knit alongs going on. We have all the small things, and I do have a winner for that this week. Um, so Phoenix Fire Tracy. Entry number 48, which was for post 38, she did hex puffs or flats. I can't remember now which one she does. Um, and mitered squares. So, Tracy, let me know what you're interested in and send me your address and prizes will go out in the post early August. As soon as I can, let's see what happens when I get my transmission pan replaced and make sure my car is working. I mean, I can walk up to the post office, but it's probably two and a half miles, which is fine for me, but that's awfully far to make Mara walk and then wait in line and then walk home. So, no, it's not that far, is it? Maybe two miles? Maybe a mile and a half. I don't know. I'm totally making up that guesstimate of how far it is. It's not far. Totally walkable for me. Especially because all of the small things prizes are small, so they're not very heavy. Um. Also, so that goes to the end of this month. So you have a little, about a week left. So I will... Um, I think I'll record after that knit along ends just so I can get the last winner in for that um, next week. And then we also have the summer shorties knit along going on, which is for any sock counts, any single sock counts as an entry. If you use one of my patterns, that counts as two entries. That one runs through August 15th. So still a lot of time to cast on a sock. 
um, maybe a shorty sock, because if you're anything like me, you can bust those out. Things that don't count are, let's move into finished objects, a little tiny stocking. Look at how cute that is. So this is using the girl looks, makes Godot look punctual um, on 716 knit yarn, the, um, the striping. And this is knit on US 1 needles. Um, I made up the pattern. It's really super simple. It's one by one rib for five rounds, the leg for 10 rounds. Throw in a short row heel, um, which I do the same sometimes and not the same other times. I can't always remember how I did it last time, so I just fudge it. 10 rounds on the foot, and then whatever toe I feel like doing that day. So that's super quick. And these will be so cute on my Christmas tree. I don't know how many I have right now. I'll let you know around Christmas when I unpack them all. I also have... So... Obviously, since I have that stocking, that means that I finished the second design sock. Um, bah! Which one is the second one? This one. So last week I was through the heel and just had a little bit left to go on the foot. And so I finished the foot, popped in the toe. The yarn is, the main color is from 716 Knit. It is... Again, the girl makes Godot look punctual, self-striping, obviously. Look at how beautiful that is. And then this aqua color is from Fairy Tale Knits. Look at me actually bringing this stuff this week. I think I'm all prepared this week. So this is Fairy Tale Knits. It's a Pegasus mini set. It came with five. So this is one of the five. And um, this pattern as long as I can get all of my ducks in a row, will be released August 1st. It is going to be, I'm super excited for it. It's going to be called Ridgeback, and it is the third installment, third and final installment in the Helicoid um, Pattern Collection, Volume 1. So yeah, I'm super, I'm very, very excited. <laughs> These are done. I think they are so beautiful. I love this design so much. I'm sorry for the shaking. Every time I move the camera shakes, so I'm sorry about that. Um, hopefully that's something I can <laughs> deal with in editing. Um, yeah, I'll try to be less wiggly, but that's not really an option for me. <sighs> sorry if you're motion sick. Um, I love these socks. I love this design. Um, I've already cast on a second pair of this design because I love it so much. I've talked about that in a few minutes. So I finished those socks. I also finished another pair of socks. So this is the Knit Picks um, shorties that I did using Knit Picks Felici Special Reserve in the Gummy Bear colorway for the main body. Last week I was in this red stripe, I worked, which way did I work these? These were started toe up, so I worked from this red stripe through the heel, through the cuff. I got that all done because um, I needed to throw on some movie knitting socks onto some needles. So I had to hurry up and quick finish this, otherwise this would still be on the needles. <laughs> the contrast color is Dandelion by Knit Pick Stroll. And this is the 50 gram skein that will not end, which is fine, <laughs> but I've used it for a couple stripes in my granny stripe blanket. I've used it for heels, toes, and cuffs on, this is the second or third pair of socks, I want to say. So, getting some bang for my buck out of that one. Um, and then I have... I have another, so let's talk about works in progress. I have an, like a half finished object. I finished this yesterday. This was my progress keeper for yesterday. And I just left it on here because I'm going to need the uh, those progress keepers and stitch markers for the second sock. So this is also using that Knit Picks Dandelion yarn. And this colorway for the foot is... Um, Felici Special Reserve in, I'm not sure of the colorway now, 
I want to say Madrigal. Yes, Madrigal. So it's this rainbowy color, and the rainbow did not have yellow, so I thought that just finished off the sock per perfectly. This pattern is a test knit for um, the Wooly Kraken on Instagram. Her name is Nicole Peters. It's called the Liesel Sock. Um, I messed up the heel starting out. Not messed up, I just did it with a different stitch than was called for and changed it halfway through. Whatever, it doesn't bother me. I don't care. It's a heel. It works. Um, but it's a slightly different heel than I've ever done before, so that was really cool. And I knit the entire foot at the movie theater on Sunday. We went and saw Princess Mononoke in theaters, which was so fun. I love the Studio Ghibli Fest that is going on through Fathom Events. I love it so much, especially because Mononoke is Gabriel's favorite. So that was extra super exciting. Oh, now the sun has come out. I hope that doesn't uh, affect us too much. Whatever. It will or it won't. I can't make the sun go away. Um, what else about the sock? I have not started the second sock. So this took me three days to do. Less, I mean, I did it over three days. You could totally do the sock in a day if you, you know, worked at it. Um, very good instructions. I will let you guys know when the pattern is released in case you're interested. It's definitely going on my short list of... Um, shorty sock patterns to use should I want to use a pattern. Usually I just use my own formula, but I do like this one. And I have, I've not started the second one yet, even though I finished the first one last night, because of this next project. I have put so much work in on the Highway Driving Mitts by Tanya Sigurdsson. So this is where I was last week had just started the ribbing. And this is where I am now. I have almost finished mitts. I have three rounds left of the pattern and then the ribbing at the top and thumbs. <sighs> you guys, I would be finished with these if I didn't keep trying them on to see how absolutely gorgeous this yarn and pattern combination is. The yarn is from Cattails. It is the, um, da -da -da -da. it's from the Wheel of Time colorway. The colorway is Nynaeve, and it is 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 5% gold stellina. Why do I think I don't like sparkle yarns when clearly I think sparkle yarns are absolutely beautiful? Look at this. I did make a couple, sorry, they're stuck on my bangles. Um, I did make a couple modifications. Um, I changed the placement of the th thumb by like two stitches just because I know my hands and how fingerless mitts fit and how I like them to fit with the pattern and things like that. So I just moved it over two stitches. Um, the pattern's fine. There's nothing wrong with how the pattern's written. I just know for my personal preference because of how my hands are made. And I also did less thumb increases, thumb gusset increases. Again, just for my own personal fit, I know what works with my hands. So that is, oh, they're so pretty. And they will be finished today for sure. The reason why I can't start the second Liesel sock is because I have the thumb stitches on hold on nine inch circulars. And this particular one is the one that I knit the first Liesel sock on. And I don't, my gauge does change between different types of needles and different materials for needles. So bamboo versus metal or um, nine inch circulars versus DPNs versus um, magic loop on longer circulars. So yeah, I will, once I finish these mitts, I will cast on the second Liesel sock. Um, I don't plan on getting that finished in three days, but I am going to the movies again on Saturday. We're having a girls' day because Sailor Moon is in, um, in theaters for the day, for the weekend, and I, my sister and I are taking our two girls to see that. So 
I will be working on the second um, Liesl sock there for sure if I don't get it finished before then. So what else about these? Anything? Everything that I've shown you so far has been worked on US size one. Actually, every project I have right now is being worked on US size one 2.25 millimeter needles. So that's what the, the needle of the show is. Uh, anything else about this? Oh, I'm a liar. There is one thing worked on the US too. I'll talk to, about that when I get there. So yeah, I just, these are, this is a great pattern. Obviously I haven't done the thumbs yet, but the mitt portion is written super, super well. And also Tanya is really great. So just go buy her pattern and support her and knit these mitts. They work up super fast, obviously, since once I actually started on them, they flew um, and they will definitely be done by next week. And I will talk about them a little bit more. I have also started another pair. I have a, this is my backup movie theater sock because um, 60 rounds doesn't, that's my, my general foot length for a sock, 60 to 70, depending on what toe I'm using, what heel I'm using, but that doesn't take me an entire movie. If I'm actually focusing, I did almost fall asleep a couple times in the movie theater. Um, so I didn't need this as much as I would have if I had been awake, but it was a rainy day and rainy days make me so tired. Also, I've seen Princess Mononoke probably 50 times, so it's not like I was engaged with the movie. I did see some new things though that I don't see when I'm at home watching movies because at home I don't really watch movies. They're kind of on in the background. Anyway, my backup movie theater knitting sock is this right here. So this is out of the Fairy Tales um, Pegasus Minis. This is the same aqua that I used in my design socks, and now it's all gone. So this is the very last of that aqua color. And I am going to, this is my, my second color, blue and brown. And then I think that... I don't know if I wanted to use this other whiter blue-brown or if I want to go into one of the solid colors next. Uh, I think I'm going to make shorty socks, which means I am only going to need two mini skeins plus what I had for the toe to make them. So I don't know where that's going to go yet. I don't know if I'm going to throw a design on it. I haven't yet. I'm kind of thinking of something around the arch, but I don't know. We'll see when I get there, if I'm in the actual movies or or what. So yeah, that's just kind of a, a go-along thing, a purse knitting project when I don't have anything else appropriate for it, which is right now. Um, yeah, so that's all that is. Not very exciting or interesting, but there'll be a pair of shorty socks. And two to go. Let's talk about the next sock. I love the Ridgeback pattern so, so much that I cast on a second pair. So the first sock of the second pair is this right here. And this yarn right here for the back of the sock is from, it was F.O. and I, which is no longer a company. Um, but Ellie from F.O. and I does have a yarn company, which I will hopefully have put somewhere on the screen because I can't remember it off the top of my head. But this is really beautiful. This is a merino tensile blend. I don't remember the colorway name. Also throwing it up on the screen for you. And then the main body color is this Gorgeous self-striping by Knitter's Nightmare. That's what it looks like. The tag is in the middle of the cake. I'm going to leave it there for right now. I'll show it to you after I finish the project. But this is um, a sock base. I don't remember which one. I want to say Batty Sock. That sounds right in my head, but I'm not sure. And the colorway is perfect with multiple R's for cats. Um, this was a charity skein that she put up and Haley got it for me. I love these colors. I love the contrast between these. I love this sock so much. I'm super excited. I hope some of you will try it. It is in Target in the round. It does, it is, it's not 
hard, but it does take a moment to like wrap your brain around how that works. Um, but I'm really, really enjoying that second sock. And my last work in progress is something that I started yesterday and will finish today. And it is knit on US size 2, 2.75 millimeter needles using some random baby acrylic yarn that I had in my stash. I am making a little heart door hanger sort of ornament. Um, I wrote the pattern up around Valentine's Day. I made one of e one of these for each of the five kids' teachers, and I thought they were really cute, and I wanted to make one for myself, but I just never did. So now, because it's all the small things, and it counts for my knit-along, I am going to make this and finish it. Um, depending on how much yarn is left, I'm not going to have another uh, enough for a, a large part like this, but I'm thinking of making one that's like this big using the leftovers. I think that would be really cute just to hang on the Christmas tree because these are like, this is a soft Christmas colorway. I feel it could be, I mean, it's obviously a baby colorway. It's got light minty green, kind of a mm, lavendery purple, maybe not quite that pink, but then it's got a a medium pink and white. So I think it could totally go on a Christmas tree and be fine. Not that I really care about traditional colors. Um, yeah, that's where I am with this. It's just a quick knit, show you the finished object next week. I really, I just think they're really cute. And I totally want to have like a, a crafty grandma house when I grow up. I do. I want to have ornaments all the time that are homemade or handmade, not necessarily by me. Um, yeah, that's just, that's what I aspire to have <laughs> when I'm a grown-up, which I'm clearly not yet. I don't try to force me to be. On to spinning. Tour de Fleece is amazing. I am loving it. Why do I not spin all the time? I don't know. Probably because I love competition. So even though it's just competition against myself. Um, so let me show you what I'm working on. From my wheel, I have Finnick O'Dare. So I am on the second of the two ounces. I have about an ounce left to spin. Um, which I plan on finishing tomorrow. I haven't yet spun today on this. So I'll spin this half ounce and then spin the rest tomorrow. And then once that is finished, I will spin. Once this single is finished, I'm going to be spinning up this um, Polworth from Chamomile Connection. And it's a three ounce um, braid thingy. So I'll have some of this left over, I'm sure. Um, but I'm going to spin that up, apply them together. I think that is just going to be so pretty because this is blues and greens and browns. This is blues and greens and browns, but this has white in it. So I think that'll just make a really pretty barber pole fiber. I have also been spinning away on my silk hanky. Not as much as I ideally wanted to. Um, I think I skipped half of the week on this spin, but I don't have any plans for this. I don't have any goals for this, so it's fine. The silk hankies. Also, I had a, um, on this finger, it's gone now, but like I, I rubbed some skin off, so there was just a little patch that was dry and I couldn't get it to be smooth. And with silk, you really need your hands to be smooth. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to let the silk rest. I don't need to work on it right now. It's fine. And uh, so that's part of why it got set aside. But it's really beautiful. I'm loving the way it is spinning up. I am looking forward to plying it. Um, I will be plying it not on the wheel, though, because I don't... I kind of want to ply as I go to see what I'm getting because I like plying as I go. Um, it helps me stay motivated because I can see what the finished yarn is as I'm going. So my plan is 
Once I finish off the gourmet stash, I will have my plying spindle open again. And then I am just going to start straight from um, the spindle. I will start plying this with the silk. I will clear off the spindle and then I will start spinning more silk onto it. Just so I can see, just so I can feel a little more accomplished and when I'm like feeling frustrated with spinning this because it does happen where I get frustrated with spinning the hankies, um, I can just look over at my plied yarn and be like, okay, it's all worth it. It's fine. I have, speaking of gourmet stash, I have been working away on that and I am super, super pleased. I finished the singles and then I finished plying the um, the small bit that I had left to ply. I finished plying that yesterday. So all I have left of gourmet stash is to ply this. And I mean, that's not an insignif insignificant amount, especially because it's really super thin. But if I stay focused and spin on this every day and spin, you know, five minutes here and there so I don't get totally burnt out on it. But if I do that several times a day, I can totally have this finished by the end of the tour, which is the 29th. That's only five days. I can do this. And then I will have this beautiful finished yarn to show you next week. <sighs> Fingers crossed. That's what I'm going for. Um, my last spinning project that I've been working on is Carnival Bears. And I have um I have a new turtle on the spindle and this is let's see can I see it Thomas Creations is the spindle it was made in 2012 I love it so so much and I took some video of um removing the turtle yesterday I was spinning on this fiber and my spindle said stop just stop I'm too heavy for what you want to do. So today I'm going to um, pull this turtle off of my Turkish spindle and start a new turtle. And let me show you how that happens. So the shaft comes out and then the skinny leg. And then the not so skinny leg. Theoretically. There we go. Okay, so that is the turtle, and here is my waist yarn that I'm going to pull out. Let's see, that's where it starts. And then we reassemble, but okay, so this is from Thomas Creations because I couldn't remember. Take the skinny leg, put it into the not so skinny leg, then the shaft comes up. I'm on the second turtle. I'm pretty sure, now that I think about it, that that is in fact the first turtle that I've spun on this spinning project that I've been working on for forever. Um, but I'm making really good progress on this. I so confession, I actually really hate starting fibers, any fiber. I, You know I don't like starting anything, actually, because the beginning is so, so fiddly. But I'm finally, after yesterday, kind of to the point where it's not too fiddly. My spindle has enough weight on it that it can spin my fiber nicely and sustain a good spin. Um, yeah, so I, the first few days of the new spin, I just didn't enjoy it. But now, today, it's going to be more enjoyable because it started to be enjoyable at the end of yesterday's spin. So, yes. Um, those are all of my works in progress, I think. All of them. I have so many going on right now. Not sorry. I love everything that I'm working on right now. Everything. I love it all so much. So, let's do some mod modular check-in. I had last time I showed you this. This is Mary Lee's blanket. Um, I had the first square and I believe I had six, um, the first block rather, and I believe I had six squares left to do. 
I believe that's correct. I don't think you've seen this version yet, um, or this block yet. So here is the next block, and I have 33 or 34 squares on it. So not bad, pretty good since the last time you saw it. The, the small things knit along is pushing me to put more squares onto this, but I am going to try to keep up that momentum through the rest of the year. Um, this blanket is not going to be done this year for sure, but you know, maybe next year, maybe the year after. I've known Merrily for a bajillion years now, 17 years. I think I'm probably going to know her for a little while longer. So she's fine waiting. I'm fine with her waiting. It'll all be good. This was pretty quick and put together, so I'm going to just give you a book recommendation. You know I love Jacqueline Carey. You know. Um, she has this new book. It's called Starless. It is really, really good. It is um, alternate mythology. Uh, all of the stars fell from the sky a long time ago, and they are gods who walk the earth. Um, the main character is a boy who is raised to be the shadow of a princess, and it follows him on the journey. I don't want to say anything about it because it's all so good, and I don't want to spoil anything, but I am a third of the way through, and I am in this place where I simultaneously want to read it just so I can know everything that happens because I am so intrigued with the story, and at the same time, don't want to read it because then it will be over. <sighs> and I feel like this book has the makings of being the first in a trilogy, not in an annoying way, but in a way where I could see that this could be a very long story to tell. So I'm hoping that's it. But then I have to wait, you know, another year or two years for the second book in the trilogy. So while I've been reading this, I was also reading two other books. Um, one is called Withering Tights by Louise Renison, and that's just a really fluffy young adult um, book. She wrote the series of books that um, starts with Angus Thongs and Full Frontal Snogging, which I read in high school, and I saw it at the library, and I was like, oh, you know what? I'll read that. It's fine. It was okay. Nothing fabulous, but totally filled my uh, potato chip young adult need for however long it took me to read that book. And the other one that I've been reading while I've been reading Starless is The Princess Diarist by Carrie Fisher, where she talks about um, working on the Star Wars movies. I've been really enjoying that, um, but since I finished Withering Tights, I think I am going to start another book to read while I'm reading Starless. I think I'm going to read um, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child because I picked up that from the library, so I think I'll read all three of those books together, especially because I'm about to finish The Princess Diarist. I think I have like 60 more pages, so that's not very much. All right, that's all I have for you this week. I hope you made something fantastic with your sticks and string. Let me know what you're working on in the comments below or on the Ravelry group. Um, yeah, I love to hear from you guys, and Hopefully, I will see you next week. Bye!